excited for this one today. I know that we've been away, what I was going to say for a little summer break, um, but I've actually just seen also someone else from New Zealand. Um, so for us folk in New Zealand and Australia, it's definitely going to be um, our winter break that we've had, a um, bit chillier here. But we are super excited for the session today um, and we're definitely back with a bang. So today we're discussing play and how play can be a strategic tool for better problem solving. And we're joined by the wonderful Ben from Lego, who's going to be speaking with Cami today. So for those that haven't been to a deep dive session before, um, deep dive sessions are conversations that delve into kind of our innermost workings and they aim to kind of help us grow and become just basically better versions of ourselves and better humans. Um, I'm going to be your host today, so I'm going to keep an eye on the chat if any questions come through and um, we can either ask them as we go or save them to the end, depending on what works best. But if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or maybe later on we might even get a chance to, to speak to one or two of you. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Today, the session is going to be recorded, um, both for Cami's podcast and for um, ADP list. So just be aware of that if we do ask the volunteers or if you do want to ask a question live. Um, and we also ask uh, that basically in these sessions, bring your whole self. You're not going to get the most out of it if you bring your whole self to the session um, and really do just kind of engage and partake in the best way you can. So a little more of the about the topic for today. Play, a strategic tool for better problem solving. Do you think play is something that should be reserved for work or for the weekends or with friends or with just family? I'm going to say, and I'm sure Ben and Cami are also going to say, think again. Today, we're going to actually learn about how play can really actually just change the way um, the workplace culture uh, happens and how we can engage and enrich them within the workplace. I'm going to introduce Cami first for those that haven't met her. Um, Cami is a, rec a recovering graphic designer who has over 30 years of design experience and has worked across all organizations, from academia to agencies, from startup to international nonprofits. Cami is now a transformational, um, transformational coach specifically for creatives and an international speaker and author based in Kansas er City area. And she is definitely known for her good juju and spreading it everywhere. Fun fact, also I've read this, Cami, and I hope you're prepared to like show us. Um, <laughs> Cami's fun fact is that she has a stupid human trick, she's called it. I think it's quite good. Um, she can touch her tongue with her nose. <laughs> Are you gonna show us? Are you gonna show us? Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I did try immediately after, um, and I just failed miserably, so. It's one of those um, stupid human tricks that's not good for anything but a laugh. Hey, mine is my fish. <laughs> <It's perfect>. uh, <laughs> anyway, um, our guest today is Ben. Um, ben is a certified Lego serious play facilitator. If I've ever wanted a job title in my life, I think it's that one. Um, working with leaders and their teams to energize and empower company culture and create transformation through play. Ben also has a really fun fact, uh, which is in Ben's early career, working in Japan and Korea, he got the nickname Two Meters. And this is one of the things about Zoom calls, you can never tell. Um, but being a tall guy, he has uh, been often asked, how tall are you? And often when answering six foot seven inches, he got a lot of blank stares. But when he answered two meters, he loved seeing the fact that people's faces lit up and they opened the door and this opened the door to building lots of connections and now has the great nickname of two meters. So I think that's awesome. What a way to intro. Um, I'm going to hand over to Cami to get started with Ben um, and you're in for a great session, but please do ping any questions in the chat. Yay. Thank you. As always, Bronwyn. I would love to see some more faces. I noticed today that everyone's got their camera off. And by the end of the day, most people are like, oh, I don't want my, I don't want my camera on. I'm tired. I've been on Zoom calls all day. But 
it's much more fun to play with each other when we can see each other. So if you're up for it, I would encourage you to turn your cameras on. All right, so let's talk about play. Um, as a mother with children, I experienced um, the joy of seeing play change uh, the way a child learns. But as adults, we kind of forget. We kind of just, oh, that, that's something that we do after work. But I know Ben is going to change our minds about that. Um, so let's start with just defining play. How, how does play fit into a nice, um, easy package or definition? Yeah, well, it's great to be here, Cami. And so the way that I think about play is as facilitated play. Uh, and that's kind of aimed to specifically solve a problem. Uh, whether that be a, a business problem or uh, a communication problem among teams or among team members. Um, so I kind of define it as facilitated play. Okay. And by facilitated, you're meaning like guided, like we're going to, we're going to accomplish this, right? Yes. Okay. We always have a kind of a clear goal and an outcome of what we're, what we're trying to get to. Okay. And I also would like to ask you about <laughs> your title, Lego Serious Play. Serious play. Isn't that an oxymoron? Doesn't that mean <laughs> two, two words stuck together that mean opposite things? So what yeah, is yeah. Lego Serious Play? It does sound like an oxymoron. So Lego Serious Play is a methodology that the Lego group uh, created out of their research from, from just doing you know research on play for a number of years. They've, they've been around for, I think, 60 years or so. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not, a, uh, I don't work for Lego, but I'm a huge Lego fan and uh, I got certified in the methodology um, when I kind of stumbled across it and uh, kind of came full circle from my childhood being obsessed with, with Lego um, and kind of that's what kicked off my, my design career, my, my creative career. Uh, and so finding this methodology kind of allowed uh, to bring play into the workplace to solve critical business problems. Wow. So how often do you run into the, the objection, wait, you want us to play, but this is a business? <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Um, and so the, the idea behind, you know, using play as a catalyst or as a tool to unlock uh, new ideas or to tap into creativity, uh, it's really, it's kind of unorthodox and unconventional, but it really cuts through the noise of kind of stuffy brainstorming meetings that we've all been in where we have a whiteboard and the objective is to try to list all these different words and people, their, their minds just go blank. They don't wanna say the wrong thing. Uh, you know, they don't want to, um, to mess up. They don't wanna, you know, it, so uh, having a, an environment where it's more of an even playing field and everyone gets to kind of build and think with their hands. That's what really kind of opens up the the discussion and the ideas and allows uh, ideas to flow. Oh, that totally makes sense because in a brainstorming session, especially if your boss is there and he's saying, all right, everyone, I need you to come up with an idea. And, and that's very stressful. It's very intimidating to, to say, uh, I have an idea or, or even worse, if you have the courage to say your idea and then somebody laughs or yeah. dismisses you. Yeah, or, or steals the idea and, and makes it into their own or, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's all kinds of, of horror stories. And so, yeah, using, oh. using Lego Serious Play as a, as a way to kind of uh, bridge that gap and kind of bring the guards down and allow everyone to really kind of freely speak and share, have their own voice. Uh, what I've noticed is that the, the co-creation process is a lot smoother uh, as well. And it, and it gives people that ownership to, to help say, you know, hey, like I, I helped create that idea. Now we can all take that and move forward. Oh, that's very cool. So when you go into a, a business, but assuming that you would physically go into a business at some point again, <laughs> um, and assuming that you're also doing live events, what does a day or, or a session or, a, or um, working with you, what does that actually look like? That, that's a good question. So it can look like a, a number of different things based on um, what the, the client or the team is trying to get out of the, the session. So I, I customize the, the session to fit the objectives. Uh, and so it could be a 90 minute 
uh, online virtual uh, experience where I would send out kits to the team ahead of time. And then we wait, all wait, meet. Kits? Uh, kits? What kind of kits? Like send Legos? <laughs> yep. I, I do customized curated uh, Lego kits and send them out along with some other materials. And then we use that to, uh, as like our materials to, to go through the session. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> you know, my friend JB has a fully functional Lego typewriter. Can, can <laughs> we just assemble that? I think that would be really fun. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't even know where you'd find stuff like that. But your stuff, I imagine, would be smaller and much more focused to the problem solving at hand, right? Yeah, so the, the kits are, are smaller, um, and it's not so much about what the models end up looking like. It's more of the abstract uh, and, and what the, uh, the model represents. So getting into the kind of the representation of the bricks and how they're assembled and put together and what that, that means and what that story is, that's where you start to gain those insights and start to see other perspectives. So the, the fascinating thing is one of the, the activities I have people do is to build a tower. And no matter like what, however many times I, I facilitate that activity, everyone, everyone's towers looks different uh, and everyone interprets building a, you know, build a tower uh, differently. So they may focus on aesthetics or they may focus on the engineering of the tower or they may focus on just building it as high as they can possibly go. And it's just really fascinating to see how we all interpret things. And that kind of gets to the, the crux of you know, communication and how important it is to actively listen and to uh, to not only listen, but to see how uh, people are interpreting um, the, the instructions. Oh, that's fascinating. That is absolutely fascinating. You know, I read something somewhere that says that scientists recently determined it takes like 400 repetitions to create a new synapse in the brain. Like you have to do something 400 times for your brain to have that neural pathway set in stone, so to speak, um, unless you do it with play. And then it's something like 10 or 20 repetitions. So have you, have you noticed that in your facilitated play groups? Yes. So, the, and I absolutely love that statistic uh, because it just kind of proves the, the point that that if we use play, we can we can get to the you know we can solve problems a lot faster than kind of going around in circles and just kind of not listening to each other but but listening to to speak. Um, and so what I've noticed uh, with a one particular project was an innovation type of project where they're coming up with a new service that they wanted to offer. And so they all came to the the session with with ideas around it. And at the more that and it was a over like a ten week period, it was a sprint. Um, and so over the the ten week period, uh, they I could you could just kind of see everyone coming closer and closer together until finally about um, you know maybe a week six or seven everyone was just aligned and so they were still able to share their their ideas and their perspectives but everyone was more aligned with the goal and where they were trying to go and so it was just really um, just I don't even know the right word but like impressive to see how aligned yeah. they were and and it was just coming together through through play. So I would imagine that companies that would in, invest in a, in any kind of play environment um, with the, the goal of problem solving um, being the end outcome that they want, I can imagine that they would spend so much less money on that than they would for people to go, go through the 400 iterations of trying to figure something out. <laughs> or trying to get some, some idea or a practice to stick. And if you're doing it 10 or 20 times um, and using the brain's own natural defaults mm -hmm. to the company's advantage, their ROI would be higher, they'd save time. Employees would sure be happier, they would get to play. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and the other, you know, the other thing is oftentimes you have people that are quiet on teams and the leaders, you know, I, I hear a lot of times they say, you know, if we could only reach that person, I really want to hear what they have to say, but I don't know how to, how to get to them. They never speak up in, in meetings or in these oh, brainstorming yeah. sessions. How do we, how do we reach them? And so Lego Serious Play is a great way to, to reach them because it, it guarantees a hundred percent engagement throughout the session. So you're, the, that leader is guaranteed to hear from everybody on their team, which then, you know, from that talent um, perspective, they can see their strengths and their creativity 
and they can see how their voice can come out and then they can actually help cultivate stronger employees and, and you know, have a better work-life uh, experience overall. Yeah, I could totally see that. So, oh, I, you know, I, I had a question that was like, oh, it's right there. And then it was like, poof, it's gone. I mean, yep, I have gone. a question. Can I jump in? Absolutely. So, I, I love the thought of 100% engagement, um, mainly from an inclusive design point of view. Mm -hmm. um, so would you say that Lego, I mean, this is quite a leading question, but would you say Lego is one of Lego play or play is one of those ways of making actually your workshop, your sessions far more inclusive? Yes, yes. And uh, so I just uh, recently facilitated um, a session for a video game company and there were uh, about 100 participants from around the world. And prior to the session, uh, there were several that were talking to their HR team saying, um, you know, I'm very shy. I don't know if I'm going to turn my camera on. I don't know if I'm going to fully participate. And by the, you know, maybe midway through the session, they were so excited to build that model and to share their story. They didn't want to, they didn't want to stop. And so I think it really speaks to that inclusivity, but then also helping people find their voice and, uh, and, and being empowered to speak out and to share and there's no no fear of right or wrong or or anything like like that or, or having someone make fun of an idea. It's not about uh, competition or, or anything like that. Um, and so it was just really amazing to see that transformation from I'm not going to turn my camera on or I'm not even going to participate to I can't wait to to build and to to share what it is that I built and what it means to me. Yeah, I would love amazing. to know in the chat. If you consider yourself to be an introvert and do you have a hard time speaking up uh, during meetings and whatnot? If you do, just hit yes. Put yes in the chat. I would love to see. Yeah. Oh, wow. The, the chat is being flooded with yeses. Yeah. And so <laughs> <laughs> that's me. You know, a, a part of the, the way that I think that why it works is that when you build that model, you're transferring your ideas from from your your mind to this model and then when you're just when you're sharing the story of the model it's it really becomes its own kind of thing and that model contains all the information and so it, it takes it from a personal kind of perspective to an objective um, perspective and so oh. people can then start to question the model and not not question you so that the defense you know your defensive nev never come up um, and so you can you can kind of more objectively Get to that root cause of the the problem, or or to find a solution, or or whatever it was that you built and what that represents. That makes so much sense. So I would imagine then this same environment of play would also help with people who are maybe new in their careers who might have a little imposter syndrome, or maybe lack a little confidence, or they don't they're not sure of their footing at a company that they've never actually met the people in person. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, uh, you know, it brings out your strengths. And so it, it builds your confidence as well. Um, that's, that's been some of the, the feedback I've received is that as the people go through and, and do these activities and build and share the stories, and they kind of they learn about themselves, and they, they figure out, oh, wow, I'm, I'm a really good storyteller, or like, you know, I never knew I was that creative. I had an accountant um, come to a session. And at the end of it, they're like, you know, I, I knew I was creative, but I never knew I was this creative, like in that I'm going to go buy, you know, a Lego set for myself and, and go have some fun. And so it's just, it's really empowering and fun to see the transformation in people uh, just from like a 90 minute session. Uh, oh, it's just, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Nice. I, I just like, can I come play? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, if anybody knows me, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge science nerd and I know there's gotta be some science behind, behind play. And, and I'm guessing Ben, that you have, you have some of those statistics. Yeah. Well, and so the, one of the biggest things is that your hands are connected to your brain. Um, and so when we're, we're building with Legos, we're thinking with our hands. Uh, and so that like fires um, to this, the, the your subconscious, and that's where like you're able to kind of think faster than you you realize you're thinking. So um, when you're given a, a time limit and constraints, and you only have a certain amount of bricks, you have all these constraints around you, and so you may think on the surface, I don't know what to do, or I don't know how I'm going to 
to pull this this off. But as you start to build and click and put bricks together, uh, when that timer goes off and you go to tell your story, it all just kind of flows naturally out. And it's because it's just it, our hands are connected to our brains and we're able to to tap into that that um, creativity uh, without without really knowing um, that that we're doing that. Yeah, it's it would seem that it's a it's a subconscious thing mm -hmm. that maps our thinking process so that we don't have to keep track of each part. And then as as we're sitting there, we can look at the part. Oh, yeah, that's this and that's that. And that makes total yeah. sense. So um, how can we start like I'm saying we as in the, the collective, we people who are um, working at an organization, whether that be virtual or in person, how can we advocate for play in such a way that us being the, the low man on the totem pole, the low person on the totem pole, can, can get the attention of the higher ups who have the, the money to say, yeah, we want to we wanna incorporate play and what might that look like? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> kind of stumped me. Uh, I would say, you know, I, like number one, I would just say like ask or ask. You know, can we can we uh, look at solving these problems in in a different way, um, or kind of to open up the conversation to to look at at other ways of of solving um, problems versus like the traditional methods that that companies may have used before. Gotcha. I would I would at least start start there. I'm not sure if that's a, the best answer. Okay. Um, I always like when I worked in a very corporate environment, uh, everyone was really buttoned up. And um, although I know the value of play, mm -hmm. um, and it was introduced to me in art school that you know play is how you you connect totally disparate wild ideas, and that's how you come up with unique novel solutions um, that surprise and delight. But if if you're working in a in a super corporate environment, what what do you think is the best way to um, to even broach the subject? Like, yes, there's a problem. Um, do you have like a checklist or anything that that could help people uh, navigate that conversation? Yeah, so I actually I, I do. I oh, have a, yay. <laughs> a checklist on the the top ten reasons why play matters. Um, in the in the workplace, um, and so those kind of cover those the main uh, points that we've been we've been talking about. Um, oh, awesome! Yeah. And how how would how would our listeners then get that checklist of why play matters? Um, they can go to my website at brandedworld.co. Uh, we can or we can drop the link um, yeah, in, we'll the, drop the the link chat. in the chat. Oh, that would be wonderful! <laughs> Yay! Well, that will definitely help. All right. What other what other wonderful things about play can you share with us? I think what I've learned, kind of going on this this journey of of leaning into play uh, more heavily it, from so kind of like to step back. My background is in design and st strategic planning, um, and so I, I got into the very corporate uh, and very and military. Uh, consulting. And so my background is, is kind of the opposite of, of play, um, if you will. But my my childhood experience is all kind of play and Lego. And so the <laughs> Lego informed my creative kind of, uh, you know, study in school and then to, in my career. Uh, and so um, I kind of think of, you know, I, I see things in my mind in Lego almost, and then I'm able to transfer that to the kind of the human experience. Um, and so uh, that's just a, a little bit of background on me. And so the, the way that, um, I kind of forgot the question, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> I tell us more about play. <laughs> yeah. So the, you know, but what I've found is that, uh, even in those very corporate environments, um, but when I was consulting with the military, for example, we would do a lot of uh, workshops and facilitations and we would ask them to, to draw or to write. And there was a lot of hesitancy and resistance. And oh, when, God, the, uh, military, you know, thinking, I can't, oh, <laughs> I can't even imagine the naysayers that you came up against in the military when you said, yeah. Hey, I think play is the way to problem solve. Well, and, and so I, I wish I, I had, you know, had been certified in, uh, in play uh, back then. But what I realized is that 
um, you know, when we got into those sessions, they really wanted to open up and to share once they felt comfortable. And so it was, uh, you know, but we just didn't have the right tools. We were using, you know, we were asking them to draw, we were asking them to write. And so they were always, you know, lots of resistance around that. And so I just think that, um, you know, had we had Lego Series Play and I was able to convince my bosses to, <laughs> to let us uh, do that, I think there would have been just, you know, amazing transformations with that. And so I think play ultimately brings people together and kind of unites us. Um, and the thing about Lego is that people just intuitively know Lego. So whether you, you've played with Lego or you're, you've never played with Lego, <laughs> as soon as we open up the boxes, people just automatically start building and putting things together. Uh, and so that, that becomes that common language uh, that really helps um, to, to bring everyone together. So I think there's, there's just a lot of uh, benefits around this concept of, of play and, and especially kind of facilitated play to try to lead to that, that outcome and, and to, to solve those, those problems. Oh, that just sounds like so much fun. So <laughs> if we, if as a group, as we're gathered today, if we don't have Legos at hand, what would be a good substitute? You know, the, so I, I talk about like a state of play and kind of getting into that, that state of play. And it kind of, the way I would define it is what brings you energy uh, when you think about kind of a creative outlet. So it could be painting, it could be drawing, it could be writing, it could be music, uh, you know, whatever that, that sort of is. Yeah, coloring. In a box be... of 120 different <laughs> colored Crayola crayons. This brings yeah. me joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it's whatever kind of brings you, you joy and like energizes you those are, that's kind of like that state of play. And when you get into that state of play, what I've noticed happens is that you're able to kind of communicate more freely and you speak more from your heart versus from your head. Um, you're able to collaborate with less friction because you're kind of, you're opened up. And so you can hear other ideas and you're not so maybe defensive or, or cutting off ideas and, and just kind of stuck in your own, um, in your own world. Uh, and so there's, there's, um, you kind of just get into this this world where the, you know, everything is just kind of flowing. Like some people call it like a, a flow state. Flow um, and state. I kind of call yeah. that a, a state of state of play. Yeah, that's when you're, it, it's funny when you're, when we're multitasking and we're going, you know, 700 miles an hour, that's a, a busy beta and our brainwaves are, are not in sync with each other. They're mm -hmm. all over the place. And as we slow down and uh, really focus on the one thing, especially if we're evolving, t involving tactile um, experience, we get into an alpha. And alpha is when um, our brain waves are more in sync. And what's funny is then those those energy levels affect the people around you as well, and um, more can be accomplished in less time. That's why you know after you've been in, in yes. the zone for a while you realize, wait, what time is it? Oh my gosh, I, forgot. I totally missed lunch or I, everybody left. <laughs> and, and you're not aware of, of time passage. You can look up and it would might've been six hours or it might've been 15 minutes, but time passes differently when you're in that alpha brainwave state. Uh, I love being in alpha. I love being in flow. All right. So if, and, and I'm kind of throwing you a curveball here. If we, <laughs> If we ask people in the chat, what is a what is a a problem at work that keeps showing up that we might be able to test run a a play um, strategic problem solving method on? How does that sound? Yeah, I love it. Okay, so put in the chat something that keeps coming up at work that you know whether it's you know, how can we iterate faster? Or I don't know, Bronwyn, have you got ideas for what, what some additional, um, what, what issues at work that you would love to solve? I think for me, it's how to even just make sessions engaging. So, I mean, play along does, but a lot of the time we're having kind of early ideation sessions maybe. So how do you, you know, improve idea, early ideation sessions? Oh, that's a good one. What else? That's what else a, we got? Yeah. Let's get let's get a bunch of ideas. How to increase transparency at work. Oh my God, Vanita, thank you. That is wonderful. Great question. You know, great that problem. Is a great yeah. question. Um, what's another one? Um, collaborating with a PM who is a from a non-design background. Uh, yes. How to get people to try out new things. 
<laughs> you force them to <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> um my when i was in the corporate environment um it was how can i make them trust that i actually know what i'm doing as a designer and that was constant it was that education it's like no really no really <laughs> um <laughs> getting a room full of people who've never worked together before to relax and trust more. Oh my gosh. Trust is huge. Yes. How to resolve conflicts during a discussion with play guys, the uh, mm -hmm. gals, people, friends, these are wonderful. How to build trust in the process before you start. Oh my gosh. All right, Ben, I'm going to let you pick if any of these <laughs> jump out at you. Sure. So the, okay. So how to build trust in the process before you start. So the, the way that Lego series play works is we kind of have um, uh, guidelines before uh, to kind of enter into this, this uh, environment. So there's, you know, there's no right or wrong. Uh, everyone gets to build, everyone gets to share their story. It kind of it, it creates this even playing field. Um, and so these guidelines really kind of set the tone for how we're all going to, to work together and communicate and have this, this, this experience. Um, and so that, that really kind of builds the trust, um, resolving so conflicts, setting oh, those. I just want to reiterate setting, setting guidelines ahead of time that, um, there's no wrong way to do this. What else did you say that, that, um, uh, everyone builds, um, everyone so everyone builds. Will, will build a model. Everyone will share the story of the model. Um, and the story of their model becomes the answer to the, the prompt or the activity or the, the challenge. Um, and so that, that really kind of builds this even, even playing field for, for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, you started with the resolving conflicts. I teach a resolving a conflict resolution workshop, but I would love to hear your take on this, how to include play in that process. Yeah. Well, so it, it really, it comes down to, you know, the, the way that the, the Lego series play process works is so there's a challenge or a, a prompt, and then there's um, a time limit and everyone gets to build within that time limit to have their story of the, the model of how they would they would answer that prompt or, or what that model would represent uh, to them in, uh, around that challenge. So if it's around uh, conflict, it would be, what is kind of your model, what does your model represent in this conflict? Um, if it's communication or or uh, whatever that, that may be. And then as they're sharing the story, because everyone gets to share their, their story, um, everyone gets to be heard. Um, and, and so that makes a really big difference in kind of resolving conflict because uh, it's not, you know, a he said, she said type of thing. It becomes more of a, this is what I heard. This is my model. This is what it represents to me. And the, again, those, those defensive walls come down and it's really uh, becomes more objective because then we can put all the models in the, the middle of the, the table. Um, and then we can, we can start to dissect and discuss uh, and really bring out those different insights and then kind of capture those and put them onto our, our whiteboard or onto a, a list and kind of see what it is that, that everyone kind of agrees on are the points of conflict and how we could then resolve them. So then the next uh, activity could be, okay, we know what the conflict is and these are the things that we all kind of agree on. How could we then build a model that represents uh, a solution to those um, or to, the, to one specific one? And then we would go into each one and kind of find that solution. And then the, the idea would be that we all kind of get on the same page for every single piece so that by the end of the, the session, we have an agreed upon outcome that everyone can agree with. Uh, and, and then we can just go a lot further, a lot faster um, all together. Nice. Here's, here's something I just thought of while you were talking. How can you get everyone to agree that there, there is a conflict? <laughs> resolving <laughs> no, no it's well, fine it, it's fine <laughs> yeah i, I mean it could be nodding heads <laughs> <laughs> it could be that that it's not necessarily thought of as a conflict but it could be you know we're really kind of stuck around this this point or we don't know where to go from here so it could be how do we do some 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 rapid ideation um having everybody build models of of what a solution could be and then to come talk about that and that could could bring out and surface the conflict and then go into a, that could allow, you know, into other conversations. But the, I think the idea is to just kind of get everybody talking and on that same page and using that Lego as a common language. That's what's really going to get everybody kind of on that, 
that equal equal footing to then really kind of uh, discuss and, and figure out how they want to move forward. Nice. Uh, Jonathan just added a great question. How do you bring people from different functions to start listening to the problem rather than just their own API? That's a good one. Yeah. So uh, I'll go back to um, <coughs> both the the innovation sprint um, example and the the video game company. With the video game company, it was it was an all company uh, session. So we had people from every single department um, participating. And what was really fascinating about that was we had you had there were a lot of creatives um, as they were video game designers, but then you also had um, business people and kind of back of house and. Uh, customer support, and so there's this just broad perspectives, and the the theme was was one team. So how does this distributed, uh, remote first video game company come together as one team virtually? And so we were kind of celebrating the idea of one team, and it was really fascinating to see how everybody had different different points of view around those those different things, but they were all able to come together. And through play, it was, they really kind of came out. Um, and uh, some of the remarks were that th that was the highest engagement they've had um, in in their all company uh, sessions um, that they had been holding for a number of of months prior. Um, and so it just it I think like to to answer your your question more directly, I think it the play um, the act of play kind of allows to to hear other perspectives. So you kind of it doesn't really matter what function you're you're from. It's just a matter of how do you contribute to the to the greater conversation. Yeah, it's the it's the common denominator. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I feel like the best brainstorming sessions I've ever taken part in had not just the creative team, but like the gal from the mailroom and the guy mm -hmm. from the distribution office and the front receptionist and. Um, the accountants and the, the, you know, accounts payable and accounts. I mean, those are where some of the most novel ideas came from. Surprisingly enough, uh, I have a friend mm -hmm. of mine who's written several books about creativity and, and how, as a matter of fact, he's also, he's six foot eight. He's just a little bit taller <laughs> than you. I call him my tiny friend, Stefan. His name is Stefan <laughs> Muma, and he's written several books. One of them is called The Caffeine for the Creative Team. And one is called Caffeine for the Creative Mind. He's got Creative Boot Camp, Chasing the Monster Idea, tons of books. But his idea of brainstorming is much more like play, like what mm -hmm. you're describing. And one of his really fun assignments is um, imagine you are a caveman or a cavewoman or a cave person, and you your job is to redesign a Happy Meal using the tools that you have on hand and the supplies and the resources you have on hand, but you're, you know, you're a Neanderthal. <laughs> what do you have on hand and what would your happy meal look like? Oh. What would toy be? Oh, and it looks like my internet is frozen. Awesome. <laughs> Gotta love chunky internet. So if you were a Neanderthal and if you had only what a Neanderthal or a cave, a cave dwelling human would have, what would your Happy Meal toy be? Uh, and then um, what if your, um, and another, another session that he guides is um, imagine if you are to design a brand new um, stroller and the goal is, you know, you have to have a baby in it. Baby's got to be safe, right? So, all right, you make a list of everything that you want your baby stroller to have in it. And you work in teams or you work by yourself, whatever teams is usually better. Oh yeah. And it needs to have a drink holder and a sunshade. And what if it had a vibrator and what if it was hot outside and you can have a air conditioned and what if it's cold outside and you can have it heated and, and then about two minutes in, he goes, all right, now everybody stop. We're going to add in a constraint. And the constraint <laughs> is it cannot have wheels go. And people are like, wait, wait, what? And the most brilliant novel ideas are coming from the places where you have constraints. And so that yes. kind of play children are like, Hey, no problem. It can levitate. It can, 
It can, you can have helium. It can be tied to balloons. You can strap it to the back of a, of a <laughs> horse. You could, I mean, like uh, all kinds of brilliant ideas come from children because they don't have that inner critic saying, that's a dumb idea. That's that don't do that. That's silly. Don't. And, and we, as adults, we kind of get up, get caught behind our inner critic saying, don't share that idea. They're going to laugh at you. So <laughs> Jonathan says, stroller's a great example, went through 12 and still can't find the perfect one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. I don't think one exists. Um, so can you, um, let's see, what was the other thing I was going to ask you? Um, oh, serious conversations. Um, I, I know that a lot of times being lighthearted and stuff for me has not been, um, received well, you know, I'll, I'll try to laugh something off and someone will say, Hey, why are you laughing? That's there. This is not appropriate to laugh. I've been called out for more than once for doing that, <clears throat> but what, how can play, um, alleviate, or at least, uh, make more efficient those difficult conversations so the i think the the biggest way is that it kind of puts you in a different environment right off the bat so if it's a difficult conversation and you're entering this this you know boardroom you're probably you're going to be pretty defensive and your your wall's going to be up and you're going to be more tense and you know it's going to be a hard conversation uh and so that's really hard to uh to kind of you know put yourself through it's very stressful um in a kind of a play environment, um, you know, it's kind of a neutral territory uh, or a neutral place. And you're, you're kind of just coming to the table and you're being presented uh, an option. So whatever the, the topic of the conversation, maybe that becomes, you know, the, the prompt where it's, you know, build a model of, of what uh, that, that uh, solution would be to you. Um, and then you would, you would take a few minutes and you would build, and then you would, that's where you would share. And by, uh, going about it that way, you're kind of neutralizing everything, kind of de-stressing uh, the, the situation. Um, and it, it kind of allows you uh, to get into a different, um, different headspace, different mindset. Um, and, then, and then really when you're, when you're listening to the other person tell the story of their model, it may get you to kind of step outside of yourself and start to see uh, what it is that they're, they're experiencing or kind of step into their shoes. Um, so there's a lot of like empathy um, around that and uh, active listening. And um, really, it, I think it just changes the whole dynamic and changes the whole experience of this difficult conversation coming from a, um, you know, like, here's the conversation and it's either going to go right or it's going to go wrong um, <laughs> versus, you know, walking in and saying, okay, it's, this is the, the difficult, this is a difficult topic, but we're going to work through it and we're going to find a, a solution. Um, and we're going to do that kind of together through this co-creation uh, in, through play. And so I think yeah. there's, it's a very different, um, two di very different experiences. Yeah. And instead of even working through it. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's where the kind of the so, serious um, play. A while back. Go ahead. Yeah. That, that, well, that, that's, I was going to say, that's where kind of the serious play um, from the, the methodology comes in. So it, it's not that it's, it's just fun and kind of fluffy work. It's going to be hard and challenging, but at the end of it, you're going to have a, a real solution um, to that problem. I imagine that teams also feel a little bit more connect connected to each other when they mm -hmm. get to play, even if they're not in the same room. Has that been your experience? Yes, very much so. Yeah. I mean, we're doing these sessions virtually. I was a little bit hesitant, uh, but the the results have been um, just amazing. Uh, people <laughs> seem to just connect even virtually um, and, and just find these different ways of connecting and collaborating. Uh, in that video game uh, session, we had uh, teams break off into different um, breakout rooms and we, we gave them uh, the prompt to uh, develop a house of the future. So there was about 10 people per team and they each, Ooh. so each individual was re responsible for coming up with, with a, a feature for the, the house of the future. And then they all presented these presentations and it went from, you know, holding up their, their model that represented their feature to uh, full fledged, you know, PowerPoints. And um, there were, I mean, people just, 
when the the more we went through the the teams, the more creative everyone got. Um, and it was just absolutely amazing to see. And that was all virtually uh, with people from all over the world, just like this this live event here tonight. Wow. Oh, okay. I just, I want to sit in one of those. That just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> so do you, do you think that, um, that helps like workers feel more seen or at least more valued? Yeah. And so uh, a really surprising statistic from SHRM research um, just came out in a, from a study in June. And then they said that 20% of workers uh, don't feel valued or respected at work. And that 20, really just wait, kind of 20%. I'm surprised it's not more, but yeah, I, when I think that I don't feel respected or heard at work. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, you know, through play, giving them a voice, having them feel empowered, getting them to share their, their ideas. Um, it really like can transform their, their workplace experience overall. Oh, nice. And I imagine that makes them a little bit more productive too, if they feel like they're being valued and, and seen and respected, right? Yeah. Well, and, and that that's really interesting that you say that because there's there is an Adobe study that came out, I think in 2012, that said that um, that's something that they're that companies are are dealing with all over the world is this creativity gap. Um, and that, you know, companies are focused on productivity, but they're kind of for, like forcing their employees to be creative and to think creatively as well. Uh, yet, like, you know people only have maybe 25% of people say that they spend time, you know, actively being creative at work. Um, and so I think that the, that's just like a really startling statistic that, you know, employees are, or employers are expecting people to be creative and to kind of think outside the box and to have these innovative ideas, but they're, the environment that they're, that they're uh, creating for people is the exact opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that's a, that's a really big problem. Um, and mm -hmm. one that, that I see, you know, play being the, the catalyst to help solve. Absolutely. There's a, there's a story from one of my, I think it is my favorite book, um, Orbiting the Giant Hairball by Gordon McKenzie. He tells a story of this beautiful green pasture and there's black and white cows munching on grass and there's a split rail fence keeping them in and the sun is shining and the birds are chirping and along comes a man in a three-piece suit. And he holds down his tie as he leans over the split rail fence and says, you cows get to work. They're dairy cows. They're working. <laughs> and as creative, sometimes we feel like we've got to be on that milking machine nine to five or whatever your hours are and, and <coughs> produce the proof of our creativity, produce the outcome of our creativity without a lot of times being given the time to go out in the field and munch grass, which is when we come up with the best ideas. Mm -hmm. So being allowed that time and, and for a company to be um, creatively mature enough to understand how creativity works in nine to five and then just shut it off you get your best ideas in the shower, in the car, um, out for a walk, out for a run, um, at the grocery store. I mean, we're humans and, and we create outside of that work environment. And then when we are creative at work, that's just the, the byproduct mm -hmm. of our creativity. Um, okay, so we're, we're almost at the top of the hour and I would like to open it up for some questions. Bronwyn, do you have any questions? Do you have anything else that you would like to add, Ben, that, that, I, that I, I failed to ask or <laughs> cover? I don't think so. I mean, I had a general observation that I loved, which is this idea of all the things that we were encouraging adults to do. We did, like you were saying, it encourages imagination. It lets us work out what's good. It builds relationships. It builds communication skills. Like, that's what we do as kids. And so for me, it's just this wonderful idea of just giving us permission to be kids and open up our learning again. And I really, yeah, I loved loved that sort of idea. I just kind of quickly saw that basically being a child at work, which I won. <laughs> <laughs> which would be great um no but otherwise I did we did have a couple of questions that came in so I don't know if you want me to get started on those 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first one's from I think Thay. Um, how do you use play to facilitate decision making, the decision making process, especially for strategic decision making? That that's a great question. Um, and so having a kind of a strategic planning background, um, I'm very familiar with strategic plans and and everything that that goes into those. And so I think there's a number of ways that you could use um, Lego and kind of um, to help help with that process. And one would be kind of doing like a ranking um, of your, your top, um, maybe like strategic uh, initiatives that you have um, to, in order to, to rank them or to find um, another uh, way would be to have the build models that would represent your different uh, strategic outcomes and then rearrange that model, um, kind of creating like a, a landscape of what that strategic plan would look like in a, <laughs> in a model uh, form. And then from there, you could kind of like download the information and put that into your plan. Um, I, I hope that hope that answers uh, the question. So like three, make it three dimensional and then prioritize it spatially almost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. Awesome. Well, we talked of model a lot in that one. And one of the questions that's come through um, is what do you mean by model? Can you elaborate or illustrate with an example? Sure. So, um, so the the methodology has kind of four parts, and so it's um, the facilitator kind of gives a prompt um, to to build, and then the, uh, it sets a time limit, and everyone kind of takes their box of Lego and begins building. And at the end of that time limit, whatever you built, that that becomes your model. And then uh, uh, then the next piece is to share the story of your model. Um, so whatever your your uh, whatever that your your Lego uh, model looks like that becomes your your uh, your model for your story. Yeah, awesome. Hopefully that answers. I didn't love that. I love it both model of a story and model in physical form. And mm -hmm. yeah, brilliant. Um, does play work well in a hybrid situation where some of the team is remote and some of the team is in the office? That's an interesting one. I'm sure lots of people are finding themselves in that situation now. Yeah, and I'm actually um, experiencing that with with clients um, right now too. So as people move, go back to the office, or and some stay home, or um, you know whatever the the situation is, uh, what I found is that Lego is kind of that common language, and so no matter where you are, um, if you have the the Lego kit, um, you're able to then kind of participate and build, and everyone has that that common language. Um, so it doesn't really matter uh, where you are. Um, as long as you have the Lego and the internet connection, we can make it, we can make it work. Yeah, awesome. Um, this one's a really interesting one and actually one that I think, um, yeah, will be pertinent to a lot of people. So how do you make sure you're not just going through the motions and are actually working towards your play goals? And they've given a bit of an example, which I think is awesome, which is the idea that actually as a team, we come together, we do this play session, um, it's really great. We've been told that we've done team bonding and we're all going to get along. And then we kind of never do anything like that again. And we just sort of go back to where we were. Um, so how do you make sure that it's almost like a consistent part of the process, I suppose? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, um, and that's a great objective or objective objection that I get as well. You know, um, sometimes people think, oh, we we'll just come in, we'll, it'll be like an icebreaker and then we'll just, we'll move on and go back to our traditional meeting method or whatever it is. And so uh, really it takes, it kind of takes the, the company um, seeing the, the kind of the vision of what Lego Serious Play can do for the company and how it can become a part of the culture of the company and become that common language um, for creativity and for communication and for collaboration, all these different benefits um, that can come from it. So I would say <laughs> the, Every, every participant needs to be kind of open to the experience and wanting to, to participate. That makes a, a really big difference. And then once the participation and the experience is over, I would say uh, reflection and kind of understanding what they got out of that session and how they can repeat those elements that were really positive would be uh, really important that they could then take that on themselves, even if the company doesn't adopt it 100%, maybe they could still get together with their team and use the, the Lego kits that they received and they could still work through problems by building you know, their representation of, of the problem and solution and kind of work through 
um, based on the experience that they had before. So I would think it, I would say it's it's up to kind of the individuals to to continue it um, if they can, um, if their leaders don't adopt it fully. That's yeah, great... I was gonna say that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Catherine. That is that is a great question. Yeah, awesome. I was gonna say it's definitely something that I feel like if you have been taught, it's a method that almost as we and especially in design, you get tools for your toolkit, right? And so it's something mm -hmm. that you can whip out as a tool at some point when you think, okay, maybe we're stifling, maybe we need a little bit of, you know, emphasis in the team or energy in the team. Let's bring out that toolkit of the of the play and the model and, and bring that back in. So yeah, I love that. Um, you did touch on here actually, which I thought was interesting. You said, oh, as long as everyone's like willing to bring themselves and partake. The next question is from Jonathan, but what happens when you meet someone that's potentially a little resistant to the idea of play? You know, it's so funny. I get this question a lot and I've had, I've had people uh, like sign up and pay and come to live events pre COVID um, and then tell me before we started, you know, I'm not really sure about this whole Lego thing. And I, I would, I'm kind of like, well, why are you here? <laughs> and so, but as soon as we get started, they're the ones that are usually the most active and the most engaged um, as they, they just kind of start building. Uh, it really becomes kind of this intuitive um, ex experience. It's hard to, it's hard to explain. I've had other people who, who come up to me and they say, you know, I'm just, I, I've never played with Lego in my, my life. Like, I don't know the first thing about Lego. Um, and, and again, as soon as we get started, and they just start putting the the bricks together. They they figure it out in their in their own way, um, and then they kind of start to see the value of it. I think it, it's really this kind of inner inner uh, you know, transformation that happens. Child, it's, it's your child. Like, yeah, it's your inner <laughs> child coming out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, that is awesome. So, one of the last questions I want to ask you, Ben, is. If someone's listening to this and they're like, you know what, I I want to I want to run this up, up the flagpole. I would love to see my company adopt this. What would be a next step? Do they contact you? Do is there a website? Do they do you have something that is kind of a leave behind that they can say, hey boss, look at this thing. I think we should yeah. do this. I think it would be beneficial. Yeah. So um, you, I, I would love to connect with you. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to uh, reach out. Um, or uh, you can go to my website, um, brandedworld.co. Um, I also have the, uh, the checklist, the uh, top 10 reasons why play matters. That could be a great um, one, like one page to, to share uh, with your, your boss or your leader, or your, your team manager um, to kind of get them uh, thinking about it. Um, yeah, and I'd love to chat. Nice, nice. Now you mentioned something about a special offer. Now, normally I, we're not selling anything on here, but I think it is so nice of you to even offer this um, to listeners. What, what do you have up in, up your sleeve for us? Yeah, well, so I, I'm just really appreciative and grateful to, to be invited into this community. And I've really enjoyed uh, my time here. And so I've recently launched uh, a digital course called Power Play. Um, and so uh, if you were to enroll in PowerPlay, I'm giving 50% uh, off of the, the full price um, for the first 15 people who use the promo code ADP50. And it'll, it'll kind of, uh, you know, awaken your inner leader, kind of guide you through um, purpose, uh, inner leadership, activation, and getting to yes. So all about collaboration, um, decision making, uh, all these different skills that we've kind of talked about, the, the whole the course will kind of guide you through that. And so power play is the Lego serious play that you facilitate facilitate. Yes. Then. Yeah, power play is, is oh, the, that's the yeah, Lego serious play. Off? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, for the first 15 people. <laughs> um and and once you enroll, you gotta, I will send you, you gotta love a... the internet lag. <laughs> awesome. Well, I've added them to the chat as well. So there's both top awesome. 10 reasons checklist in the chat and the um, link with the promo code. So make sure you get on board. And I'm one of the first 15 people. Um, very exciting. Awesome. Thank you so much for that generous offer. And wow. If I, if I had employees, I, I'd be signing up like this, but it's just <laughs> me. 
um, I just want to play. Like, <laughs> can you just send me a Lego set? All my kids took their Legos with them when they moved out. <laughs> if you're looking to buy a Lego set, I would recommend the bonsai tree. Um, or, uh, oh. you know, there's there's a number of, of awesome sets, but the there's been some new botanical sets that uh, have been coming out. And those are a lot of fun. I think there's a bird of paradise. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, lots oh. of fun. How fun is that? All right. Um, are there any last questions for Ben? Nope, we've covered them all, I believe. Um, of course, feel free to ping them through and we can um, try and answer them as we go. But otherwise, I think we're done for today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who attended. This was great. Uh, I think there were a lot of takeaways in this. And that checklist is amazing. Um, I think that's the thing that you can help your uh, help you convince your boss to incorporate <laughs> some play for strategic purposes. Thank you so much again. This was so much fun. Great. All right, everyone have a wonderful, wonderful evening and we'll see you. Uh, I know we'll see you again at some more ADP list events. Take care. <laughs>